Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our Advent season is moving right along and now we can feel the excitement of Christmas building now just a few days away. I am Father Andy Pavlek, the pastor of Our Lady the Most Holy Rosary here in Albuquerque on the West Mesa and it truly is a joy to be with you on this holy day. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's mark ourselves with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We hear in our gospel today the great and familiar story of the Annunciation to our Blessed Mother and her immediate response to that call. She was pure in so many ways. And now as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we prepare our hearts as best as we can to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side. He said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and I have destroyed all your enemies before you and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wherever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. of the Lord I will sing forever through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness for you have 
said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will see goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Glory to you, Lord. the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and coming to her he said Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, and he will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. 
Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you again in this, you know, kind of virtual way. Again, many of us in our communities are very limited as to what we can do. Many churches are not having any public masses. Some that are are very limited in what they can have as far as attendance. So I know there's a lot of us connected today and uh, the messages keep coming through. And so I greet all of you again with uh, a warm Advent heart. As we continue this Advent journey, we are not there yet, are we? You know, uh, if you look at the rest of the world, um, I mean, just the Christmas sales, and already we're hearing about the after Christmas sales. e hola You know, and for us, we don't start the celebration of Christmas for a whole bunch of days yet. You know, we're still, we embrace this fourth week of Advent as fully as we possibly can and we need to talk about what these readings are about and how they relate to our lives. There's a connection. You, it might seem a stretch for some, but there's a real big connection between that first reading from the book of Samuel, our gospel, and even the second reading as well. Of course, when we hear King David being counseled by the prophet Samuel, we hear about this, this conundrum that's, that David's in because he's living in a palace, and the Ark of the Covenant is still in a tent. That's the gist of what's going on there. And David's kind of like, well, how can this be? Well, when we think of the Ark of the Covenant, we think of, you know, the Ten Commandments and that Ark that's very, very precious to all of us who follow uh, the, the, the following of Abraham and Moses and everybody else. Um, but that Ark of the Covenant is paralleled with the Ark of the New Covenant, which is our Blessed Mother. See the connection? So as we're hearing about that in Samuel, we need to connect that with all those thousands of years later when Mary comes on the scene. And as we heard in that second reading about obedience, did you hear that? Um, But now made manifest the prophetic writings, as we heard from Samuel, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. Therein lies, again, the connection to the gospel. An angel came from God to a town called Nazareth, to a virgin whose name was Mary. It's a familiar story. We talk about it all the time. We have special feasts for the Annunciation. We remember our brothers and sisters from our Church of the Annunciation here in Albuquerque, and we hold, of course, them in great high esteem. But the story is very clear. We remember Mary, 15 years old, very young, very pure, but very brave. And as we find out, of course, very obedient. When the angel comes on the scene, I always feel sorry for it because it's like, you know, if an angel comes on your house and you're like, uh, I would need to hear from the angel, do not be afraid. And I think that's a message we need to hear ourselves today too. Because as this COVID reality continues to unfold, one of the things we need to do is not be afraid. Not be afraid to wear our masks, not be afraid to social distance, not be afraid to do all the things that we're being asked to do in the sacrifice of what we have to embrace, aligning us with the sacrifice of Christ, understanding what Mary was sacrificing in her own life to accept this role as the mother of our salvation. So there's that. But then we have the immediacy with which she says yes and the obedience with which she says, yes. Just the trust, speaking of the trust of God, that is the reality of what we need to hold on to. We need to be faithful that God is going to get us through this most difficult time. We need to be thankful and thankful that God's going to allow us to once again celebrate, maybe in a virtual way, the celebration of Christmas this year. Maybe we need to trust and not be afraid that if we are a very separated community during this Christmas season, that God is here guiding us the entire time. Yes, the vaccinations, real, real close for some people, but for many of us won't happen for many, many weeks to come. May we have the faith and the understanding of obedience that Mary had and the trust in God that Mary had that we too may embrace all these challenges in our day. As we conclude these days of Advent and the next few days before we begin the celebration of Christmas, may God be with you and in your families keeping you strong, keeping you obedient, keeping you faithful and trustful in God as we grow as one family in faith. My dear friends, continuing in our Advent season, we are praying our Apostles' Creed, 
responding to the question, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now lift up our prayers to the Lord, trusting that they will be heard and accepting God's will in response as Mary, as did Mary, our model of faith, obedience, and humility. For the church, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, that we may bear witness to Christ's presence in our hearts, in actions great and small, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders around the world, that they may show care and compassion to all whom they govern, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and other health care workers who minister to women about to give birth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all candidates for priesthood in our diocese, that they may have the courage of their convictions and the generosity to act upon them if they believe in their hearts that God is calling them to the priesthood. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our community that are in need of prayer and whose intentions are contained in this basket, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life and love, you have listened to the prayers of your faithful throughout history. Listen to our prayers we make here today and grant them according to your will. We ask this through the one whose arrival draws near, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John Charles, our Bishop, Michael, our retired bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace.
My dear sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we are just about five days from the Christmas celebration, on behalf of all the people of the Catholic Center, the Archdiocese, Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, and everybody else, we wish you and your family a completed Advent season and a happy and holy Christmas season as well. Until we meet again, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to serve our Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God.